Hello and welcome to episode 3 of series 4 of Become a Legend Story Mode. And do we have an exciting one to start off this episode. We're going straight into an old firm derby. There are a few more intense, more bitter rivalries in world football and Jermaine Defoe is going to be plunged right into this head-to-head -head matchup starting today as he is. And uh, yeah, I think nothing much more to do than to get into it. Obviously, we're off the back of a, uh, in a way, slightly disappointing loss to Barcelona, who uh, got a penalty and a free kick to win 3-1 in our first Champions League group game. And despite losing 3-1, I think there is potentially some momentum to be carried into this game. Although, hang on, are we on the back of now two losses in a row? Yes, we are. We lost to Kilmarnock. Top of the table, Kilmarnock. That was a tough one uh, after beating Ross County. So, yeah. Yeah, probably not doing so well, but to be fair, Celtic have started the season badly as well. We both sit on five points. Come the end of the season, you'd expect us to be uh, first and second in some sort of configuration. But at the moment, we're sitting mid-table and we both need a win. Right, let's get into it. So here we are, little cutscene for the old firm derby. And uh, I mean, it's a special occasion. This is a game that is just, there's so many complicated sub, not subplots, that almost devalues just how bitter this rivalry is. I think I might have said bitter a hundred times, but it's absolutely true. Um, I'm going to, I'm sure, make mistakes here. I'm not an expert on it, but essentially what I do know is that uh, Rangers are the Protestant club, Celtic are the Catholic club. That obviously provides some measure of uh, disagreement there. There's also extra layers to that. So Celtic as well as being the uh, Catholic club, it's sort of the Irish Catholics. Um, this all this also joins in with Northern Ireland and sectarian conflicts there between Protestants and Catholics. And Rangers are sort of the more, uh, they're not the Scottish side and Celtic aren't the Irish side, but there's that sort of there and that's another conflict. There are layers to this shit. And this is a rivalry that has been deadly, quite literally. And the tensions around it and the violence and just all the awful stuff. You know, the, the pressure that the players and the managers, you know, Neil Lennon recently, a high profile one, is just something quite different to anything you see in England. It's, I mean, probably you get rivalries close to this in South America, perhaps, uh, in other parts of the world maybe, but this is quite a special one and has created some pretty impressive games in the past. And uh, Jermaine Defoe is well up for this. But this will, as I said, be on a level that he's not experienced before. We've got Murphy and Kent behind us. I'm not sure about Kent playing out on the right. It's much better on the left. That is a shame. Arfield, Dorans, and Davis in the midfield. And then Tavana behind us, Katic and Helander. Helander's been pretty decent. He is a hulking presence at the back. And Fodderingham preferred to McGregor, which is a shame. Uh, Jack as well in the midfield has been good. Shame not to see him. Celtic, uh, well, no starting place for... Uh, Big favourite of this channel, Olivier and Chin. Shame not to see him in. Uh, obviously, they've got a lot of talent. Uh, Scott Sinclair out on the left-hand side. No place for that young... What's his name? Is it a Dembele? I think they might have a Dembele. A really young 15-year-old, 16-year-old who's highly rated. He's not in the side today. But this will be a tough one, I'm sure. Let's just get into it. So as it stands, uh, with their first match played in 1890... Uh, Rangers are slightly on top at the moment. They've won 161 of the 418 matchups compared to Celtics 158. So it is very, very close. But now as Rangers start to draw closer to Celtic in terms of quality, in terms of potential to win the league, this is once again an absolutely huge fixture. Under the lights here at Ibrox, we want to be starting the season well against our rivals. And we've, uh, yeah, we've been dropping off a bit in the league. We've had a couple of poor performances. And this would be a great time for Gerald to inspire a big win in front of the home fans. Right, let's go. Ball into the box. Eduard with the header. First proper chance of the game there. 11 minutes in. And not a particularly difficult one for us to deal with. It started cagely. It started tight and physical as you'd expect. No chances so far for Jermaine. Oh, really poor there from Adja. Defoe through on goal here. Can he open the scoring? Oh, he's put it wide. Onto his left foot. We've had nothing to report of at all in this first 25 minutes. And then a big mistake here. Just latched onto by Defoe. You wouldn't really call that a bad first touch because he did well to intercept the pass, but it put it just too far ahead of him. He was a little slow to react as well and then put it onto his weaker left. But that's the first chance in this game. And it was a gold-plated, gift-wrapped one for Jermaine Defoe. Unfortunately, we couldn't finish it off. Other than that, it's been a very cagey first few minutes here. Oh, that's a lovely ball through. Defoe again, through on goal. Around the keeper. Can he finish? Yes! 
That's it! That is it! In the Old Firm Derby. And that is a strange celebration at home in the most important game of the year. But we'll take it anyway. And that is absolutely classic Jermaine Defoe. Clever run. Little dummy around the oncoming keeper. And then a cool, cool finish. Cool as ice. And uh, wow. I mean, he's already writing his name in Rangers folklore at this start of the season. Keeping Morelos out of the side. He missed a big chance only moments earlier. But that is just the sign of an experienced striker. Someone said in the comments that I am absolutely fangirling or fanboying, I can't remember which one it was, for Jermaine. And as much as it's a little bit difficult for me as an Arsenal fan, you just can't deny what he's achieved and how good a goal scorer he is. And as a striker myself, or attempted striker in football, I just, you've got to respect it. And that was a great example, that goal there as well, of uh, just experienced centre-forward play. And he's through here again. He's managed to find a ball this time. And the shot is there. Oh, I was fucking talking. And <laughs> the character got... I think if I'd been paying a little bit more attention there, that could have easily been another. I mean, the sliding tackle probably would have taken us out. It was a good ball in the end. But as I was saying, I'll continue this monologue. <laughs> Uh, to miss a big chance as Defoe did and then come back with a cool finish to take it round the keeper that's just the sign of an experienced absolutely top draw finisher and uh, couldn't be prouder and I think I'm just about done now McGregor now only one minute left in this game as Scott Brown brings it forward we seem to have just parted there to allow the captain through can't keep possession though and it will be half time here at Ibrox and well Scoring after half an hour in your first Old Firm derby of the season. I've probably played one before. Mate, you can't do much more to make yourself a real treasure here <laughs> at Ibrox. And uh, miss one and then quickly score one to make up for it. Very, very pleased. I would like to perhaps apologise slightly to my very brief description of the Old Firm derby. And also, you know, the rivalry between Celtic and Rangers. And just the, the most briefest touch on the sectarianism that fuels it, it was not enough. It was underwhelming for such an important issue. And apologies for the lack of detail. Apologies probably for the mistakes. Um, I remember I had a friend whose dad was a Rangers fan, Big Jimmy. And uh, he used to describe Celtic fans as second-class citizens. At the time, I thought that was just a bit of banter. But I know that it does run deeper than that. And it's a very, very serious thing. And uh, it's not something to be uh, taken lightly, really. It really isn't. So... You know, from one point of view, a very serious thing that, you know, there's not in a good way necessarily, but a very serious hatred between two groups of people, which is never nice to see. But obviously on the pitch, that spills over into a crucial game. And thankfully, we started well. Can we hold on to it? Well, Celtic haven't really managed much in this game. Perhaps showing why, like us, they've had a difficult start to the season. Another chance for Defoe on a blue arrow. You would expect him to take it. Let's do it. Oh, misplaced pass there from Jafoe. Now Edouard. Into Scott Brown. That's a great challenge from Holanda. Thank God for that. Almost our mistake there. And now Jafoe will have another chance to run at him here. Puts a simple ball in. Oh, Hunt can't keep hold of it. Sinclair now into McGregor. They've started the half at quite a pace here. Good ball into Forrest. Great footwork. Good trickery. And the shot is just wide. Celtic looking to draw things even here. And that was a great bit of attacking play. Some lovely footwork here. Edouard on the turn. Somehow he found the space for the shot. Oof, narrowly wide. Oh, McGregor floats one in. Out only as far as Scott Brown. Lovely challenge there. Huge challenge. And now Defoe. Can he hold it up? He can and he spotted a ball. Is that into Kent? Bitten's back with him. That's a poor, poor foul there. I think Bitten's already got a card, has he? But that's surely a yellow. It is a yellow for the Celtic man. That's their second caution of the game. Smart move from Defoe to put the ball over the top. That might be Murphy, actually. Is it Murphy? I don't know, but Bitten into the book. Forrest back to McGregor. Celtic certainly displaying a degree of comfortableness that they didn't in the first half. They look to be the side most likely to score, but that is really strong defending. And then a desperate clearance. That sort of shows where we are at the moment. Got us pinned back here. That was rash. We had the ball back. It was really well won. Now they'll have possession again with Bitten. Into McGregor allowed to turn. That's a smart ball, but easily intercepted by John Flanagan. And that'll be back to the keeper. Right, come on. Let's take a moment. Let's take a breath. 
And it has been all Celtic in this second half. And that's fallen kindly for Mbombo. Clever ball into Rodgers, into the box. Keeper comes out. It does enough. Huge save there. Massive save. Celtic in the ascendancy. A goal for them now could be absolutely critical. And, uh, yep, that's a good ball through. The big lad into the area. Keeper spread himself well, though. That's brave goalkeeping. Important stop. It's going to be McGregor. Short to Hendry. He'll take a touch. Play it back. Oh, gets a ball in. Shouts for handball there, surely. Defoe looking for the counter-attacking move. That's another great save. Looked to be curling in perfectly. It wasn't for the outstretched arm of our keeper, who's playing really well, actually. Scott Brown, lovely ball into McGregor. Oh, too easy. Oh, what incredible defending that is. We're hanging on a little bit here, but with only eight minutes left, that is fine. We haven't had a chance in this half, as far as I'm aware. If we can keep it 1-0, then no one's going to be too bothered. McGregor into Rogic, turns, oh, and the deflected shot is wide. It is all Celtic here at Ibrox. Can we hang on? It's long balls to nowhere. That's where we are now. 89 minutes on the clock. Can we hold out? We've battened down the hatches. We have closed all the doors. We've double locked them. This entire 45 minutes, that's pretty much all we've done is defend. Even Defoe's been back, putting in a shift as well. And that goes straight through to the keeper. Let's just keep the... Just, just a few seconds left here. Flanagan. Just keep the ball. Just keep it. Not balls across the... Yes! Huge! Absolutely huge. A derby win could be what we needed to kickstart this season. And of course, it's Jermaine Defoe with the decisive goal. Half an hour in, and then we just held on. We just held on for that second half. And the second half of the first half. We just held on. Jermaine Defoe with a 7.5. We covered a lot of ground, actually. Interested to see if uh, any of our interceptions were noted. Yep, two interceptions. More than anyone else. Well, equal with Davis as the highest player in terms of interceptions. We put in a shift. We were everywhere. Not just scoring goals. We did just about everything you could ask of him. And uh, rightly awarded the man of the match. And obviously the crucial goal. Very, very sweet. So perfect start to the episode. And Kilmarnock losing to Aberdeen as well. So we can sneak up into fifth. Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff. Only four points now behind leaders Hearts. Hearts are certainly one of the better sides. Aberdeen, I believe, slightly higher rated than some of the others. But really, it should be Rangers and Celtic up there at the end of the season. And I did expect that to happen. Celtic are starting to get to the uh, really needing to pull their fingers out stage. So 7-8 and eight for Jermaine Defoe. One assist. Almost made it two assists in that game. Uh, but we couldn't finish that one off. Luckily, it wasn't necessary in the end. And a national team squad announcement. What a time for this to crop up. You'd think we'd have a chance. But I'm guessing by the lack of anything here, uh, we weren't selected. But I feel like we've done enough, surely. Surely to be uh, in Gareth Southgate's thoughts, at least his deepest, darkest thoughts maybe, his, his naughty little thoughts late at night. Oh, could I stick Jermaine in there? So, Hamilton Academical. Uh, unsurprisingly, they originated as a school team from the Hamilton Academy, and they started all the way back in 1874. And actually, they remain the only professional club in British football to have originated as a school side. So that's pretty cool. That's an interesting fact about Hamilton Ackies. Um, but as you can see, they may as well have a load of schoolboys out there by the quality of some of their players. Uh, notably, a couple of 60 rated players. No one in the 70 region at all. And uh, yeah, well, we've got Ojo back in. We haven't seen him for a few games. Uh, ideally, we want to have um, Kent on one side, Ojo on the other. But we haven't seen that huge amount. Uh, Murphy back in today, had a fairly unimpressive game in the derby. Um, Kamara in today, I don't think we've seen much of him. He is just a 69 rated central midfielder. Don't even think he's out of position there, I just don't think he's very good. Uh, Davis and Arfield, that's fine. Taverners there. Changed back line, but we've got a lot of quality to spread around. Surely we're going to be too much for Hamilton, let's go. So here we are, back into the league and we're away from home here. <sighs> We've had games that we've said we expected to win and we've not. So, you know, after the success of the Celtic game, which could have gone either way, you know, at times we were holding on. We just need to keep our focus here. We need to dispatch them. And just keep climbing to the top of the league where we need to be. Oh, well, that's a lovely ball in to Boyd on the turn. Oh, he's hit that really well. A little bit of swaz and that might have just snuck in. But uh, it stayed straight and true. Just wide, but... Hamilton Ackies with the first effort here. 
Ojo now into Defoe. Oh, it's a clever ball. Just about finds its mark. Now Murphy looking for options here. Cuts inside. This is better. Little flick into uh, Defoe there. That's smart. Back into Ojo. <laughs> really good build up there. Unlucky. Defoe lays it off. I think that's probably our field. He keeps it well. Touch inside. Out of his feet. <laughs> He's hit that very, very well. I was expecting to see the net bulging there. Simple stuff. It's a good ball by Arfield. He showed great strength to hold off his man. Defoe back inside. He looked like he had enough daylight there to at least hit the target, but it wasn't far off. Oh, it's a hopeful ball. Defoe's there. Oh, it could fall here. Oh, taken out there surely, but it's fallen neatly. And oh, he's missed it. Oh my God, he's missed it. That was a very fortunate series of events. Not sure who that was. Ended up through on goal. Defoe, <laughs> just clothesline there. Oh, we couldn't finish. Unlucky. Tavern now steps inside. That's a clever ball out. It's controlled well. Arfield puts one over the top. Defoe's not aware. I'll go all the way back to the keeper. And that will be half time here. And on the road, we failed to score, but we've had this game completely under our control. But only one shot on target. Not enough. As we will, I'm sure, come to see in a lot of the games against some of the lower sides. It's going to be about breaking them down. We didn't manage that against Kilmarnock. Then we were hit on the break, and it all went wrong. Hopefully, Hamilton haven't quite got that in their locker. But we do still need to get the win here, so we need to score. Let's go. Oh, Defoe, lovely flick with the chest. Now a chance here as it's played through. Oh, it's come. Oh, no. Okay. There is a free kick here. As the ball was played, he was impeded illegally by the looks. Yep, yeah, that's very, very late. And this is a great opportunity here. Not sure who's going to take this. But this is in a great position. Over the wall. Great save. So opportunity here from the corner. It's put in towards our field. It's headed away. Defoe lurking edge of the box. Oh, it's a smart ball and a good finish. There we are. Rangers number nine. <laughs> oh, 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 I just, I'm, I'm running out of uh, superlatives and potentially expletives to describe how good Jermaine Defoe is. I mean... I can't exactly remember where the Scottish Leagues rank in terms of uh, World League rankings, but I think it's a fair way down. And so you would expect Jermaine Defoe's been very recently scoring goals for Bournemouth in the Premier League, albeit not as a starter. Um, they wouldn't have too much trouble at this level, especially given a run of starts, which I think in real life has been his problem. He's not a guaranteed starter under Steven Gerrard in real life, but at the moment, I mean, he's undroppable. The amount of goals he's scoring, you have to keep him in the side. We've finally broken down this team who've defended well, defended in numbers, but just could not defend against a ruthless goal scorer like Jermaine Defoe. Good ball into Boyd here. They've not had too many chances, and they could have a big one here. There's Arfield with some rash defending on the edge of the box. Takes out Boyd. Could be potentially a little bit too close, but we know how deadly free kicks can be in this game. Looks like it's going to be Beck over this one straight into the wall. Thank the Lord. Tight passing, that's a smart ball. Defoe's there, just wants to cut back, just wants to cut back. Come on, that was easy. Defoe looks up, finds the ball through, he's onside here. Keepers come along. That's a pass, that is absolutely pillow-esque. But I don't think it was, <laughs> I think that was a shot. <laughs> Could have almost finished it there with a second in the dying moments. And that's it, well... Another Jermaine Defoe goal is the difference. One goal is all he needs. One chance is all he needs. And uh, we uh, get another important three points in the league. And Hamilton certainly did not really do much to get it back into that. They did have a shot on target in the end. But 38% uh, possession at home. Hardly likely to be enough to uh, challenge Rangers with. And another man of the match and another goal. We keep them coming. We're consistent. And that's what Jared must surely be looking for in a striker. But we did run ourselves into the ground there. And if we've got another game coming up, we're going to be very, very tired. So Celtic losing to Aberdeen. Jesus Christ, they are having a shocking start to the season. Only one win for them so far. And we keep crawling up into third. Four points now behind Hearts. And Aberdeen, who overcame Celtic, move up into second. It would be a massive shame, really, to win the league without this being a head-to-head -head battle against Celtic. But we'll absolutely take it. We are not fussy at all.
Are things decreasing? That's the question. I haven't been looking. Physical contact could be due to go down to 64 if they are. I mean, they are decreasing. Development sheet is on a massive downward trend, as you'd expect. So only three days later, yeah, we're going to be absolutely pooped for this one. I wouldn't be surprised to see this on the bench. Um, let's see what the messages say. Uh, we are starting a centre forward. Remember, focus out there. Thank you, assistant coach. That's some good advice. We're probably older and more experienced than you are, but fine. Let's take a look at the sides for... Uh, Probably the Champions League group game that we'd be hoping to win. Look at Loi Remy's hair. That is something to behold. Looks a bit like the Champions League trophy, interestingly enough. Um, but they're a very good team. A very good team. Lots of quality throughout the pitch. Good young players. A lot of players who are just good to sign in Master League in there. Bamba, I like. Ikone, I like. I don't think they're particularly young, but they are good players. Uh, Defoe, eh, he's quite tired, but he's regenerated his health pretty well. Ojo and Kent starting today, so it's a full strength front three. Tavern is in on a blue. We've got all the ingredients. Can we keep the good form going? You never know what could happen. So I asked the question in the last episode, um, how do you get through to the Europa League if you don't get out of the Champions League group stages, you have to finish third. So that's what we want to achieve. We want a chance of a European trophy or a European quarter-final or something like that. That would be amazing for Jermaine Defoe and for uh, Rangers as well. So this is the side that we're likely going to have to beat to that third spot. You would think that uh, Barcelona and Man City would be taking the top two spots. Can we scrap it out for the third one? Well, let's see. Good distribution there. And Defoe lays it off. Quarter of an hour in here in France and yeah, it's been pretty tepid. Pretty timid from either side. That's a good ball. Looking for Defoe, defender does well, unlucky. That's what I love this year, they'll make passes without you calling for, for them, and that is rare. That is really rare, it certainly was last season. If you're not tapping that pass to me button, then it's very rare that you get it. Bamba now, looks to put it across, it's blocked by Taverner, but Remy will pick it up. Good footwork from him, and that's not far away. The home side have had the chances so far, low at Remy the closest there. Oh, incredible work, Defoe. Somehow he comes away with that and he can release Shady Ojo. He's away from Gabriel. He's got Kent in the box to aim for. The cross is blocked. First attacking anything really of the half for Rangers. We've been pinned back. Now we have a corner. Defoe's made a good run. He's there ahead of Sanchez. Sanchez just does enough. Tavern a great strength from him. Finds Ojo. Back out to our field. Try to make an intelligent run here, and it is an intelligent run, but the defender's there just to prevent the shot coming in. We keep possession. Ojo, good strength, out to Tavener. Takes it down. Defoe's looking for it in the box. It's played in. It's hit players coming through, but ultimately it breaks down. They are defending resolutely, Lille. Anytime we've had any chances, it's been snuffed out before it's even begun. And they're looking to break here. That's an important touch, but Oconi will pick it up. Oh, more good defending. And that is it here in Lille. And it's been tight. Neither side wanting to lose this one. Neither side wanting to have a shot on target, apparently. We've created nothing. We've been backs against the wall. We've got close to their goal. It's been snuffed out by some athletic defending. Some rugged and powerful defending that Jermaine Defoe is really struggling to deal with. I think away from home, we just look to keep it solid. If we get something on the break, brilliant. If we don't, we'll take the point. Thanks. Good close control here, and the ball into Akoni from Remy is a beautiful one, and they're off the mark. Yep, yep, that was coming, that was coming. That's not keeping it tight, though, is it? Let's take another look here. Akoni just had too much space here. And then that's a great ball from Remy. Ah. Okay, back to the drawing board here. Akoni. Oh, spreads a lovely ball, looking for Bamba. Oh, Bamba somehow keeps that in. That's a dangerous cross. Remy's there. Can't get to it, but Sanchez will keep it alive here for Lille. Defoe trying to do his bit defensively, trying to just win the ball back here as Lille continue to batter us here. Probably out of position here, but we're trying to be involved. Bamba, though, in possession here for Lille, finds a Kone. His shot squirms wide. And that could be us done here. No, okay. Stay of execution from Gerard. We're pretty tired as well. Imagine he'll be turning to Morelos fairly soon. Will we get at least one chance before the end of this game? 
No, we won't. Uh, not a single chance, I don't believe, for Jermaine Defoe in this game, which has been a very disappointing one. I mean, you go from Hamilton Academicals one minute to uh, Lille the next, and uh, sometimes I'm sure the step up in quality can be difficult, and it's felt like an absolutely huge, an, an Everest level step up in quality today, even against what we call the worst of the three sides we're playing against. Uh, still, obviously, a very, very good quality Liga side. And they've shown it today, and we have struggled to create anything with 10 minutes left. I can't see that changing. And that is it. That is it here in France. Let's not look at these stats, shall we? Oh, oh, I mean, there was only one shot in target for the whole game. It was a very tight one, and only a six today for Jermaine Defoe, and a rare no-goal-scoring game for him as well. And unfortunately, that is where we're going to have to end this episode, for reasons beyond my control. I just don't have time for a fourth game today, and it looks like we could be on our way out of this Champions League group. Oh, Barcelona beating Manchester City 2-0. I'll see Lille move into... Oh, no, so they're third. Yeah, we're yet to register a point. Yet to register a goal. Oh no, we scored one goal. And that brings us down to an average rating of seven. Still pretty good. We'll take that for the season. That's always the benchmark. We want to go for a seven season. Difficult in the first season, perhaps. And only four days later, well, after a poor performance there, will we have lost our starting spot for the Motherwell game? No, we haven't. Morelos remains on the bench. He must be getting frustrated, but you can't argue with the amount of goals that Jermaine Defoe has been scoring. Hopefully we can continue that in the next episode as we go up against Motherwell and then it's back into the Champions League against Manchester City. It's not going to be a fun one, is it? Join me for that. I'll see you in a bit.